Hi guys, and welcome to yet another wrap up for another readathon. This one is for the boy band readathon, and most of the, so I, I was only holding up this. <laughs> There's only two books, um, so this one broke down into some separate boy bands that were very popular in the '90s when I was a preteen to teenager. Um, <laughs> so the teams were NSYNC, um, let's see, Backstreet Boys, the Jonas Brothers, and Hanson, is that the last one? Yes, so the four teams. I opted to be on Team NSYNC. Um, I did not listen to anything from Hanson nor the Jonas Brothers, I think they were a little bit after that, um, maybe early 2000s, I think. So I felt like they were too young for me, <laughs> in a way. Um, so I did not let myself listen to them. That was my own thinking. I'm sure I would have liked some of their music, but... Uh, Backstreet Boys... I was Team NSYNC all the way. <laughs> Backstreet Boys, I remember... An adult, I don't remember what adult, but an adult telling me that their music was a little bit too mature for someone my age. <laughs> and again, when I was like in 7th and 8th, 7th, 8th and ninth grade when NSYNC was real popular. And it was always a battle between N Street, NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. And I, I was allowed to listen to NSYNC. I let myself listen to NSYNC and I loved NSYNC music. So I went on Team NSYNC. And I think with looking back, and I've listened to Backstreet Boys since then. With Backstreet Boys, I think it's more, their music tended to be more subdued. NSYNC, I think, was more upbeat, upbeat and poppin'. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Backstreet Boys, I think, was more romantic. NSYNC was more fun and boppity, bibbity boppity, whatever. However you want to <laughs> say it. Um, focus. There we go. So... Yeah, so let's go ahead and get into this. So there was a buddy read, and the bu buddy read was This Lovely City by Luis Hare. <laughs> I did not get to that. So uh, I did get a copy on my Kindle just recently um, because it does sound good, but I did not get to that, so unfortunately. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and just go in order. There are seven... Yes, there's seven prompts. The first one is read an author's debut romance book. So this one I went with The White City by Grace Hitchcock. This is a debut. It is romance. It's also historical fiction. Um, and it is book number one in the True Colors series, which they take something that happened in American history, some a true event that happened in American history, and it becomes fictionalized. This first one we're following Winnie as ultimately she gets the approval from her father, who is the police chief in Chicago at the White City, um, for her to kind of go under approval to work for Mr. H. Holmes, who is a murderer and killed a bunch of women. And this was when the big fair was going on in Chicago, uh, when the Ferris wheel, was, Ferris wheel was put up, and it was done in a way to try to outdo the Eiffel Tower in Paris, according to a nonfiction book I read a while ago. Uh, I gave it three stars. I enjoyed it. There is a bit of a romance. I thought the romance was very sweet. And... Ooh, I had a chill. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. Oh, man, I got goosebumps now. So I, yeah, it was good. I, it was just barely shy of a four star. It was, I want to say it was less than 300 pages. I want to say it was around 260 pages. I just felt like it was a little short. I felt like there was a couple of things lacking that could have been developed on, like a little bit more of the romance, a little bit more of the investigation. Um, so I felt like it was a little short, but again, this is a debut book, so I'm not going to fault it too very much. Um, and I enjoyed it, and I will definitely read more. I know that Grace Hitchcock wrote another book for the series, and I look forward to getting to that at some point. So, okay. Next up, the second prompt is read a book with two people on the cover. This one I went with The Shark Collar by Zilla Bethel. This is a middle grade, and there's two people right there. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this is a middle grade, and... I don't know. I 
I enjoyed this one. I gave this one three stars as well. There's basically, so this girl s squatting right here is from the main America land. Um, and the other one's on an island and she, so the, the one that lives on the island lives with this guy, her parents were killed. Um, and the guy that she lives with is what's called as the shark caller. She wants to be a shark caller, but she wants to be a shark caller to kill a particular shark. Um, and this other girl shows up where her dad, this girl shows up where her dad is investigating, claiming to investigate the coral reefs, that he is a professor of the coral reefs. Um, but then you start to figure there's an ulterior motive, and so the girls get together, they become good friends, and they try to figure out what exactly is going on. It was sweet, it had its magical elements, it was very whimsical in a way, and it was very sweet. And there's a couple of things I highlighted in it, one of them being... I don't know how to say it because it is a different language, but it's T-A-I-M, tame? I don't know. I'm going to say tame. <laughs> tame is just a basket which carries life and death, and no one can live their life without being touched by death. That is impossible, so death is just a part of life. Um, let's see, what else? Things said in anger are not truthful, I say. They are just ideas that haven't found the right words yet, so trying to put them into words early is wrong. Um, okay, I liked this. Let me read this last little bit from you for you from this. <laughs> I think that people are what they are when they are born. I think there are things that can happen to us along the shark roads of life that might change us, but only a lick lick, which means only a little. People are like rocks on the shore. The sea will slam into the rocks day after day, hour after hour. Old tame, old tame. I don't know what that means. But the rocks still look like rocks. They do not become something else. There might be a few scars and parts of the rock might crumple like dust into the sea, but they are still almost the way they were when they were created by uh, Mororora. I don't know. The same is with people. There is nothing that can happen on this world that will stop a person being who they are. We are all born a certain way and we all die a certain way. I don't know. There's some good stuff in that. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, again, three stars. Next up, the third prompt is read a book with the word me, by, or heart in the title. This one I went with a library book that I have not returned yet. And this is a romance. It's a closed door romance. There is sexual innuendo um, throughout the book, a little sprinkled in there, but it is closed door. You're not actually seeing any of the sex. And that's if you ask me. So there's the word me. This is by Libby Hubshire. Don't know how to say it. Uh, I gave this one four stars. Thoroughly enjoyed this. There were some parts that made me giggle in this. So Violet um, is right here. She works for a newspaper column. She does an advice column called Dear Sweetie. So people will send in questions about life, about romance, whatever it is, and she will answer questions. Um, she is up for syndication, goes home to tell her husband the exciting news and walks in on her husband having an affair with someone in the neighborhood. So you're watching that fallout. She turns to kind of becomes destructive. She burns stuff in the out in the street that belonged to her husband, like a signed Michael Jordan poster, I think was one of them, and some clothes. And um, she turns to alcohol and she becomes more or less guarded with the filter in her mouth. <laughs> So things happen. Um, there's other little things that happen to her. So there's a bit of like someone does something to her but lets it kind of unfold so that someone else thinks that she did it when she really didn't, if that makes sense. So like someone does something bad to her. Someone in her life finds out and thinks she did it on purpose and she's like questioning herself going did I actually do this when I'm pretty sure I didn't do it starts questioning things um, anyway during the fire when she's burning her husband's stuff um, this guy that you see on the cover here walks up he's a firefighter his name is Des and a romance blossoms and ensues and I tell you he is 
how he is written, Des is written, is like the type of person that I would like to meet and fall in love with in my life. <laughs> so very sweet, very much um, tries to help you out whenever he can um, and just wants to be there for you. So I don't know. I, I really liked it. I, there is someone in here that is bi, that, but they're in a female-female relationship. And there is a male-male relationship. I liked the talk about how the CEO which is of the newspaper, which is Violet's boss and best friend, they are best friends, she is, um, not only is she bi, but she's also black. And she taught, there's one point where they're good enough friends that she, her name is Kara, Kara, I don't remember. Anyway, she tells Violet, basically, pull your head out of your butt, you're being a jerk. Um, and she can be that tough love type of a friend that people sometimes need in their life. And she's telling Violet how, how Violet can have these second chances in life because of who she is. She's straight, she's white, she's, you know, all this stuff. But with her being black and being the CEO of this major newspaper column, she's like, people are watching for her to make one little mistake and then they're going to pounce on that mistake and do what they can to get her out of the position that she's in because of her race. And so that was touched on very lightly, but it was there. Um, there was a lot of good other stuff in here. I wish I could have marked this, this book up, but it's a library book, so I can't mark it. But I thoroughly enjoyed this one, um, gave this one four stars, and I look forward to reading more work by this author. Um, love how things ended. There is also major... Um, talk about infertility and miscarriages as well in this. So if that is particularly bothersome, which I know that is for a lot of people, then definitely avoid this particular book um, because it is an underlying thread in this. And so it is mentioned quite a bit. So those are the only two physical books that I read. <laughs> okay, moving on is, let's see, I lost my place. Oh, prompt number four is read a book with a trope you want to read more from. So I am currently reading, and today is the 26th. So with there being 28 days in the month, um, I will finish this. If not today, this will definitely be done tomorrow because I am now just over halfway. I am reading Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I like these thriller stuff. What the trope I like that this is giving off that I thought this was in here um, before I even picked it up. And I think it is in here. <laughs> it hasn't, things are starting to build up. And I think this trope is going to become more prevalent. There's, I like places that have a dark history that things start to surface and bubble up. I also like it when there's question of the main character if they're really hearing what they're hearing, seeing what they're seeing, or if it's all in their head, if they're reading too much into things. Uh, so that you're questioning basically the sanity of the character. Um, and things are starting to bubble up and you're kind of wondering if she's reading too much into things um, or if her mind's playing tricks on her, if she's hearing things, sounds that aren't really there, which, you know, old buildings make sounds. And so it's like, is she hearing a sound that the old building makes naturally? Um, and she's just so involved in other stuff that she doesn't hear at other times, or is it really a sinister sound that she's hearing? That's the type of thing I love in stuff like this. So I am looking forward to finishing this book. So I don't have a rating for that um, because I am still working on it. Um, the way it's sitting right now, it's probably going to be like a three star. But again, things are just starting to really hit the fan and escalate. So I'm hoping it'll go up to a four star. But at the very least, it'll be a three star. Unless it takes an absolute nosedive, which I don't think that will happen. Um, okay. Next uh, prompt is read a book that takes place in Florida. For this one, I am reading an ebook. I am reading A Palm Beach Wife by Susanna M Marin, I'm guessing is how you say the last name. Um, I'm only 25% of the way in. This, as of right now, at the 25% mark is either going to be like a two, maybe a three star at the most. Um, we're following this person who worked hard to get into this life where it's you go and schmooze and it's very socialite-esque. And basically what has happened is she finds out within the first like two pages that her husband has lost all of the money. And so now she's wondering what the heck they have to do. I mean, they're in debt, like $30,000 or $30 million, something like that. Um, I know big differences, but I can't remember which term was used. And so she's kind of freaking out and <laughs> she's worried about how that's going to make her look, how it's going to make her daughter look, um, if it's going to make it so that her daughter is going to lose this 
prospective relationship that she's in um, with the chance of marrying into a wealthy family. Um, so it's very kind of socialite-esque that <sighs> we'll see how things are handled and what happens. I don't know. <laughs> I'm reading it just because it takes place in Florida. I don't think I own any books that take place in Florida, so I got this one on my Kindle. Um, so it's an ebook, and I just don't know. We're gonna see this fallout. Her husband, in the first couple of pages, you do find out her husband was involved in drugs or alcohol or both, and she's wondering if he got back involved in that. What kind of risky business did he get involved in that made them lose that money? Um, and what else is he going to say that's going to turn out to be a lie? And that's kind of where I'm sitting at right now. Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen. So a Palm Beach wife, I'm expecting there's going to be a lot of fallout and a lot of humbling stuff that the character is going to have to go through. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let's see. Prompt number six is to read one of the lowest rated books on your TBR. I did not get to this one. I did pick a book. but And that was Oasis by Katia de Becerra. Um, I do own that. It's on my bookcase. However, where is it? I don't know. It's on my bookcase. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to have time to read that. So I'm just counting this prompt is not read. So the last prompt, so that was number six. The last prompt is to read a book from one of your favorite authors. This one I am went with a novella and I read Rolling in the Deep by Mira Grant. I gave that one four stars. I really enjoyed that one. <laughs> and I think it was the perfect length for how it was written and things like that. So this one you're following um, this character. Basically what has happened is there's this television show that wants to investigate if murmur murmurs, mermaids actually exist. So they get on this ship, they go out to the sea, and they're going to try to investigate. They're probably going to slip in a couple of little lies to make people think, hey, they might actually be exist, are they these really mythical creatures or not, um, things like that. They even hire some people to go on to act like mermaids um, in case they can't get good footage to give them plenty of options, basically. And people start dying, and you're basically, you're following the time of when they're on the ship, and then it cuts to parts where there's kind of like a documentary transcript and it talks about how the ship, everyone went out and then the ship was found and no one was alive and no bodies were found. It was just empty. Um, so they don't know what happened and they don't know if they'll ever know. And so it just kind of goes back and forth between the two. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I did, tr now Mira Grant is a pen name for Sean and McGuire. I tried reading the first book in The Way Were Children. I didn't try, I did read it. And I didn't care for that book. Um, and I think that was more whimsical, and sometimes that can be a hit or miss for me. I like the darker, nittier, grittier stuff. Um, and so I think writing under Mira Grant might be more my style. There is a book by Sh that's written under Sean and McGuire that I want to try. We'll see. I'll try to, because I'm not sure if I'm going to like it under that name, or if, I don't even know if I'll continue on with The Way We're Children, but this one's completely different. Um, so I don't know. I may check it out from the library to <laughs> first to see if I'm going to like it. But yeah, so I give that one four stars, Rolling in the Deep by Mira Grant, all about mermaids and trying to know if they're real and they're really these fantastical mythical creatures or not. So that's it. So that's what I read for the boy band um, readathon for Team NSYNC. And yeah, it was good. I kept that pretty successful. So I will, by the end of this month, have completed every prompt except for the team read and that one prompt that I told you about where I picked Oasis as the book, where it was the lowest one rated on my TBR. So yeah, highly successful, I want to say. So that'll be it. Let me know if you participated in the boy band, Battle of the Boy Band readathons and what team you were on and what your favorite read for the month was. Just talk to me in the comment section below. And until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.